I need. I can't. I didn't even see this part. Uh, I have no choice but to buy a Speed UTV. There is what the design looks like as the Speed UTV air conditioned four seat design. Uh, this design, with regards to chassis, is what we call frozen in the manufacturing industry, uh, which means we're not making any more changes to the chassis. Okay, so saw that right there. Basically, Rob, I think he's saying no more changes to the chassis, which I means, I guess Fine. they're done with. Yeah, they're done with the four seater, and what you see in this video is is what's going to be. And let's just see how it's going to be because I think it's pretty ba. B -A. That's about that. All right, let's check it out. Okay. We'll be back. Something that is been being used on my trophy truck, this new aluminum transmission uh, front diff suspension pivot point bulkhead, as we call it. Um, very, very similar, like a transaxle on an Indy car, Formula One car, where all the suspension points bolt to it. Um, we've gone off and we have patented the front end that is basically a Formula One uh, transaxle. Okay, that's a that's kind of a mouthful. Whatever. That is a mouthful, but I'll tell you my three favorite things Scott said. I feel like it was Formula One, IndyCar, and like, what was the other one? Uh, trophy truck, I think. Trophy truck, yeah, that was the number one, actually. Did he say that? He did. Anyway, so we have heard and, uh, and seen front diffs on Razors and Can-Ams, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess that could be a, you know, a pain point that could be addressed with I'm this car. I'm just really excited. I keep saying, I'm gonna say it again, the trophy truck that he keeps mentioning because he comes from that world. Yeah. He's in that world. Yeah. And, so, uh, yeah. and the bulkhead issue is definitely a known issue on Can-Ams. Uh, we know of someone who smacked into the tree in the, in the snow. Some of you know who that is. <laughs> and he had to put a whole new radiator, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, yeah. but I guess the bulkhead's kind of an issue. It's a common thing. Mm -hmm. So maybe this uh, is a stronger car in the front end. Who I knows? trust Robbie. I trust him. We'll see. As we move into the front suspension, there is no ball joints. I'm so sad about that. Not okay. I know, like the ball joint issues. They got whatever. I just like your freeze trick. Like we can't do that anymore if we <laughs> buy this car. Right. Uh, we'll have to flash that in there. Actually, mm. we probably won't. But yeah. yeah, ball joints. We've definitely seen the videos and the pictures of cars. Uh, I just bought the press. With the front end laying on the ground. We so, have seen it. Yeah. So maybe that's uh, another. Another. I mean, if you look closer at the video that he put out, the whole thing, it's like an hour long. We're just doing a little summary. You'll see more information about the ball the joints. The ball joints, um, what was it, like flopping about all over the place? There is no offset tie rods this time. Uh, there is uh, massive dual piston brake calipers. Okay, that, I like the idea of the massive pist uh, dual piston calipers because the Can-Am, it's sitting right there, uh, it will stop, it will, Lock up Eventually, the, it'll stop. Well, no, it'll lock up mean? the tires. Oh. No, absolutely. Yeah, I think some people are mistaken about that. They're pushing the brakes, and they're thinking that it's not locking up. They do. They feel a little spongy. You have to mash them hard to lock it up. And I think some people are under the impression that they're not locking up, but we they lock up. Issue. Yeah, but I don't like the way they feel, and it would be nice if you could. You didn't have to put so much effort into it. It would that be. Would be that might be a thing. I think it's going to be a thing. We're gonna find out because I'm gonna drive this car. Yeah, we'll be back. Um, there is double um, double rod end model ball. Upper A arm is adjustable, so guys that want to go racing and drop some camber in the car, they can drop some camber in it. So far, some of the little things I'm seeing and some of the things you'll see going forward in this video, Brandy hasn't seen it yet. The car looks pretty stout, um, and there's I've seen some of the video. You yeah. were fell asleep and I watched it, but. Um, it looks pretty stout and some of the um, issues that are addressed I think are addressed because of issues with other cars um, some of the pain points um, he will talk about weight coming up well that's all you can do really is like build upon the pain points of other cars and make them better like yeah. you know so hopefully but uh, the weight so some of these things might add to the weight and again we keep comparing it to the Can-Am that's because that's what we have and we but, will continue because that's what you're going to, you're going to compare it to the Razor, the Can-Am, whatever, whatever you have. We'll also compare it to the Razor because we've owned a Razor, not a Turbo, but we owned a 1000. And um, we've driven the Turbo S. We've yeah. done, we've driven a lot of the different cars. And Absolutely. I feel like, um, not saying we're experts or anything, but we're just giving our point of view because from where we come from. So we compare it to what we've driven and what we had, just like you'll do. But in reality, 
you can't really compare it to anything because none of us have actually driven it yet, right? That's right. I'm excited. We'll find out. But just remember, if you drop camber in it, you're gonna have to take some wheel travel away because you're gonna droop out too much on your CV at full droop and full steering. It does have two seats. Um, it is on, on sliders, on roller sliders that are uh, structurally sound for off-road vehicles. It does have trailing arms. Uh, it does come with 32 inch tall tires stock. On two cars now, both with a trailing arm, rear trailing arm suspension. Mm -hmm. We can't compare them to a non-trailing arm suspension. But um, I think that um, based on what our experience, uh, suspension seems to work great. We say good thing. Yeah. And 32s, I mean, we're looking to upgrade our Canam to 32s. It, like you said, not just because they look cool, they do, but you yeah. know. But yeah, we like it. But you have you have a bigger footprint on the ground with a bigger tire yep. and better grounds clearance, so that's a plus. Yeah. And they look cool. Yeah, they do look cool. Comes with four point or five point harnesses, stock, whatever the customer chooses. You can decide to hook up the middle one or not hook it up. With all the things that we've seen so far, and I, there's still more to come. I mean, the car. I don't remember what the price is. We're not going into price. We're not going into certain specs. We're just taking a general look at this video. If this is the kind of, I mean, and we don't talk about price because if these are the things you want, you end up spending that money anyways long term. We yeah. did. I mean, you just, it's what happens. But the yeah. safety of the five point harness, we've, I don't know. I'm a big fan. Yeah, I like the five point harnesses. Uh, feel safer with them on and you feel a little more secure locked into your seat and the loaded thing like again i'm going to say it again i feel like because it's coming from like trophy truck the loaded that we're saying like we're speaking of like from like a street car which comes with this and ac and da -da -da, you know like power seats and windows but like the suspension and the ground clearance and the bigger tires and all the stuff that he's talking about like that's I just feel like it's going to be like bad at hopefully and speaking of all those accessories wait till you see what's coming up i was actually really shocked We'll be right back. Um, it does come with V-bars and what we call our patented spine. Okay, so more for more on the patented spine he just mentioned, I cut a bunch of that video out because uh, it, just, it goes into a lot of detail. We're trying to keep this video sim uh, simple summarized. and summarized and short. Um, but go check out his video on his website. Link below. Yeah, and it covers it covers exactly what that means. There's a little bit more, I think, in this video. So check it out. Mm -hmm. Um, but because we go from the shock mount to the V-bar, V-bar to the halo bar, halo bar, down the spine, as we move backwards, we get into the rear pivot points that ties the rear shock mounts. And as you see, a lot of vehicles in the UTV marketplace, um, none of these have a spine in them. And none of them have uh, lateral loads. So, um, by having a spine, we believe we have the most structurally sound vehicle in the UTV marketplace. Call right here this A post bar. Uh, a lot of cars don't have this bar. This bar is now here. Um, it's a requirement for most race series. I believe it's a, a for sure requirement at the Dakar. They call that the, uh, the A post uh, A. Okay, so the A bar A. Uh -huh. uh, which is required, I guess, in race in, in sanctioned racing, mm -hmm. uh, and you can see that car doesn't have it. it doesn't. And I don't know of any other car that has it. But you're going to be racing, and it, he said it was good for a Dakar. Is that how yeah. you say it? Well, if it's good for Dakar, it's good for Discar. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> no, seriously. Um, but again, these little things are what kind of starts to add up to the weight that you're going to hear about coming up. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's not. This car's not ready to race. It's not ready to race out of the box but uh it's closer he says coming up that it's closer than any of any car out there by far seems like it what's the weight of the cars the weight of the cars are going to be what the weight of a proper car is by the time somebody outfits one so what i don't want to do is i don't want to say a weight and which i'm going to tell you the weight but i don't want to say a weight and then you say well god a polaris is um you know 1800 pounds versus 2200 pounds I don't, let's just go on rough numbers let's say let's say we're 300 pounds heavier but remember when you buy that Polaris you're coming with small 28 or 30 inch tall tires you're coming with a non beadlock wheel you're coming with a roll cage that you're basically going to spend another $1800 to $2000 on a roll cage Okay, so that's some cool stuff. And he goes into that more in depth in the video if you actually watch the whole thing. But, you know, he's basically saying uh, the weight of the car is based on 
a lot of the upgrades that it and has. And what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Based on the proper upgrades that you would end up doing anyway. So you're out of the box car, you take that weight, then you add on all the accessories that you want to make it faster or give it better suspension or have bigger tires or whatever you're doing, different cage, you know, that adds weight. So I can see um, some heat coming up on some comments mm -hmm. about what you're about to see, regarding what you're about to see. Um, you haven't seen it yet, so. I have not. Yeah, but when we're done, you'll have to tell me if you think that people are going to debate this subject. They probably won't. People are usually just super nice about things, so. I think they're going to debate this subject. We'll check it out. These cars will be MIG welded, uh, and I will tell you the reason for MIG welded. Um, the reason for MIG welded uh, is it is structurally safer for rollover crash testing from what we found. Uh, based on all the NASCAR stuff that we've seen lately, all the tests have gone through, it is all DOM equivalent tubing. tubing. Um, wall thicknesses, um, I believe all the blue is, is that 095? Yeah. All, all blue tubing is 095. I believe green tubing is 120. Yeah. Uh, and then we get into the red tubing is, I believe that is 095 as well. That's a different wall, uh, different size tubing. That's an inch and a quarter tubing. And then we get down to some inch and a half tubing with the, uh, with the orange bars. And the yellow bars are another 095, just a different um, wall, uh, OD diameter, not wall thickness, sorry. What part of the chassis will be removed for easy maintenance? So I believe that I can zoom in here. Uh, hopefully you guys are able to see this fairly clear. Uh, there is a chassis connection right here. And there is a chassis connection down at the bottom. Uh, different than the double X, uh, this chassis disconnects here. So it makes the assembly of the engine a lot easier. You can do it as one complete unit. So basically the whole back of the car comes off to get to the um, engine mm -hmm. transmission area. Um, I'm sure somebody's gonna have concerns about that, maybe, possibly. People I don't have know. concerns about everything. We'll so Hopefully we welcome in the comments just because we don't know either. Yeah, we're just showing you what we what the video that and we And we're excited across. to have yet another accessible off-road vehicle available yeah. that i think you know could really be a game changer hopefully there's been a few cars out there very few but there's been a few cars out there that we're excited about driving not going to go into which ones they are but this is one of them this is one of them we'll be back is the car going to be fully race legal no uh, this car is not a fully race legal vehicle um neither is a textron double x and by no means is a can-am polaris or honda even close to being uh, race legal but what this will be it'll be the closest vehicle to a race ready vehicle okay so this whole uh legal race legal all that stuff he goes into that a little more in the video okay, just so. that uh, this one supposedly is more race legal. right oh no and i, I agree with that i just think people are still going to get like call him out on things that he hasn't said i'm just preparing preparing uh today i'm showing you the four seater uh that in my mind is what the wheelbase needs to be for a Polaris or for a UTV. Uh, example, the new Polaris has a 125 inch wheelbase. Okay, so here's where I'm gonna say something that we're gonna get comments about and people are gonna disagree and that's fine. I might disagree with you, who knows, go. So the wheelbase of the Can-Am currently is my favorite for a two-seater. We've driven the two seat razors extensively. We owned one, we put 3,000. And our wheelbase on this car is 102 inches. We owned one that we put 3,000 miles on. Um, and I don't like, I didn't like the wheelbase. Now the new Pro XP is um, longer. That well, yeah, it is. We haven't driven one yet, but I'm sure it feels more to our liking. This car is a four seater, so it's shorter than a Can-Am four seater. I like the, I've dri we've driven the Can-Am four seater, not a stock one. It felt good, but it feels long. It's I, um, a longer wheelbase, but it's shorter than a Can-Am. So longer than a two-seater. Uh, I don't know how it compares to a four-seater Razor. Four-seat Razor is 125, and he's 120. Wheelbase or? Wheelbase. Okay. So it's still, yeah, still shorter than a Razor. Mm -hmm. I haven't, I have driven a four-seat Razor. It felt, the. I'd say. I was not my favorite. I would like, but I would, as far as the difference between a two-seater and a four-seater, I did like the Razor better in comparison to the two seater. But the four seat Razor, so 125 inch wheel or 125 inch wheelbase. So the Turbo S that we drove, you know, the, the Turbo S cars are 72 inches wide, 
100 and what are they? Um, wheelbase is 125 inches. So those cars, in comparison to their uh, cousins, the two-seaters, I definitely like the difference. When we drove a uh, two-seater compared to a four-seater Can-Am, I still prefer the two-seater. The two-seater is just long enough that it feels good over the whoops and whatnot, uh, where the four-seater, I don't it just felt long to me. It did feel long. You still have um, you still have a lot more maneuverability, but at the same time, you are still having that cushy ride, I think, with this car. We'll see. And that's another subject coming up. This car, I think everybody already knows, but it's 77 inches wide. 77 inches wide. That so, My only concern with that is how is it going to fit into some trailers, but I'm not going to go into it. So 77 inches wide, 121 inches 120 wheelbase. Wheel inch wheel 120 base. inch wheelbase should feel good and stable. That's longer than my trophy truck. This car is exactly what my trophy truck is. This is a 120 inch wheelbase, four seat, UTV four wheel drive. Um, with that, the Polaris, the new RZR uh, Aztec is, um, I think that's 125 inch wheelbase. I believe the Can-Am is longer than my four seat pre-runner and 136 inch wheelbase. Uh, one thing, you know, you, you say, okay, well, it rides really good in the bumps. Yeah, it'll ride really good in the bumps, but it's going to suck on the trails, and it's going to be horrible in the dunes. And the reason why is because the wheelbase is so far apart, you're going to get high centered on top of the dunes. So you have to raise your ride height so high to be over the top of the dunes. I just don't think that's an ideal wheelbase. That part, I don't necessarily agree with too much because we've driven the four seaters. Um, we didn't really, we didn't really come across situations where we got high. Center. I think it's just a lot of that is going to be. There's going to be a lot of factors that come into play. It's going to be the driver. Uh, Really, that's yeah. it. But if the ride height's up where it belongs, it should do pretty well. Uh, suck on the trails, pro I, I would we say. Do. Yeah, yeah. And in some situations, I think maybe it might suck on the trails. But, but any his car's 77 inches wide. That would suck on a trail, too. Well, there's mm -hmm. that. I'm not calling you out, right? I'm just saying. But. <laughs> right. All right. Fast stats. Horsepower on the new Speed UTV. 230 engine horsepower, engine horsepower. Let's make sure that we are talking the same language. That's engine horsepower. That is not to the tire horsepower. Um, we're working on an E85 methanol based fuel that will produce 300 horsepower. 30 horsepower, I mean, out of the box, that's nice. Uh, the RR is now, the Can-Am RR is now at 195. I don't know if anyone else is in that game yet at 195. I don't think so. But uh, 230. That's awesome. 230 is not hard to achieve in a Can-Am nowadays or a Razor, either one. But uh, they don't come from the factory like that. They That's don't. And um, I'm going to tell you right now, we're not at 230 and I'm not missing anything. So. Well, and the nice thing is that that 230 is on pump gas, not E85. Right. That's a big deal for us. We, we're not a big fans of having to run E85. Uh, we're just working people. We don't want to have to, and also like just to go fill up your gas cans and hit, you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, we have a, um, um, a fill station on our trailer. Yeah. So we just fill it up. It runs the generator. And so unless we, we get a generator that starts running on EA5, I mean. Uh, that will be a leader in the industry as well on power. Ground clearance is 15 inches at static ride height. That 15 inches with 77 inches wide will pass the J-turn test. So I don't have to lower my car eight inches to be able to get it to pass the J-turn. We have designed the body to clear up to a 35 inch tire. 25 inches of usable travel, okay? Uh, what this is, is 25 inches of usable ta travel, front and rear. Here comes that debate. 25 inches of usable travel, front and rear. People are already, you said, arguing like the uh, Polaris has said they had 25 inches, but it's not really usable because you'll... I don't know. I don't know. But we people are debating that. Yeah. So, I mean, we do know, but that's we're not going to go into it in we're this talking video. About this car. But, in this, but he just claims, made the claim that it's 25 front and rear usable. I'm not um, debating. I'm not... I wanna, I'm going to ride. I want to drive it and test yeah. that out. That sounds awesome. Ours I have no 22 reason. and 24, I think. I have no reason to not Doubt believe it. that it's 25, so... Yeah. Can't wait to try it. The new shock is located in the center of the A-arm. Sway bar is at center of A-arm. This allows us to use the same 
left and right lower a arm time something like that's done it's pretty cool because you know it makes parts easier to come by well, i just feel like that's awesome because we've run into that situation very recently and uh you know luckily we were able to get what we needed because we have people that are cool that like us thank you josh rich and steph and kelly but honestly like any interchangeable part on a car makes me excited yeah we did i think we called around we had i think we were able to find one but it, you know wasn't we couldn't get it right now yeah um, no it wasn't and just because this one's interchangeable side to side doesn't mean you're, you're gonna be able to get it right now yeah but still but, any interchangeable part like i like the idea of that because well it is going to be more readily available so. yeah so lower a arms are now universal upper a arms are now universal obviously shocks are universal not only to left and right but they are the same shocks on the rear so now when we make a shock component we make four instead of one for you guys the ones that want to go out there and have spares you can have one spare shock it'll go front or rear one thing that will be different will be spring rates because obviously the rear of the car and front of the car need different spring rates and the compression rebound on the piston inside the shock has to change. Talking about the shocks, are it's the same shock all the way around, front and rear, uh, which is cool because, you know, he's basically saying you could, or he did say, you can have one shock with you and change it out. The problem is, I mean, not a problem, but it's still the one thing about that, they have different spring rates and they have different different internal uh, setup, piston, whatever. So you would still have to open that shock up and change it for, the, you know, if it was for Depending a front on which or, side, yeah. where you're putting it, yeah. Yeah, front to back. But so, I mean, still the, the option of carrying just one with you, even if you had to disassemble. Yep. It's kind of a, you know, it's kind of a game changer. Well, like and only that. having to buy one shock. So we have optimized the rising rate in the suspension, not only the rising rate in the shock versus compression, rebound, and spring rates. Rear suspension is back to our, again, uh, patented trailer arms that are universal left and right. 3.25 inch internal bypass, 12 inch stroke, 360 degree clockable reservoir, which means that shock can go on any corner of the car. Externally, independently adjustable compression and rebound. This is something new for us that we have not um, manufactured before, and I don't believe anybody in the industry has manufactured it, that gives us both compression and rebound. Dual rate springs, uh, there will be a slider in between here. You will be able to adjust your spring. It all will be threaded. Shocks look cool. I want to see how they work. I want to feel how they work. I think he said they're aluminum body. They're 3.25. I'm a big fan of the shocks now. I never knew how, I, mean, I guess, until we've had like all this work done on our car. What a big difference. Yeah. Um, in your enjoyability the <laughs> shocks do make so yeah it makes a big difference in the ride for mm -hmm. sure um but again i mean the shocks are all kind of similar it's not yeah. like they're, it's i don't think it's some uh, alien technology game changer where you're going to be like oh my god as you can see spindle shoulder bolts all the way through every suspension port point on the speed ut vehicle has been optimized with proper hardware. One of the biggest problems with a lot of manufacturers, they'll get cheap with their hardware and they'll stop the thread ah, about right here. Well, by stopping the thread there, that gives a shear point, a fracture point. Uh, we have optimized all bolts in every suspension component that there is. It's, it's kind of, you know, it's one of those things, the details, right? So, instead of having the bolt like you said where the threads are part way up the bolt at a sheer point it's a shoulder bolt all the way through so that just gives a little more strength it that's a minor not minor minor weight addition but when you add up all the hundreds of little thousands of little things like that that might have been done on that car again contributing to weight uh but also contributing to contributing to safety and durability performance strength this comes as a production unit. This is not an aftermarket race hub. This is the production hub on the Speed UTV. We basically cut some misalignments apart for you. Uh, these are uh, replaceable monoballs that have the misalignment built into it and have a rubber boot protector over the top of it. This is the one that goes in the bottom A-arm. This is the one that goes on the outer trailing arm and the upper A-arm. Same part goes in both places. I think that um, from what I'm seeing so far, 
it seems like he's put a lot of thought into uh, having it perform more like a, um, not just uh, like baseline your average and then you have to add on all the upgrades. I think he's wanting it to be, come out of the box more like a, a the vibe and feel of a trophy truck, which I am all, I am like on board for that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the mono ball, definitely you have a, you know, instead of a single shear point, like a ball joint, uh, and we know the ball joints break on these things. Don't talk about we that. haven't broken one, but we know it happens. So again, it's just one of those little additional things. Also, one of those additional things that adds up a little bit more weight. Yeah. But an awesome, awesome uh, addition or a, I don't know, upgrade. You would say. So to, I, yeah, upgrade. We would say that's the thing that's cool about it because it's not an upgrade. It's standard on this car. Exactly. I mean, this is adjustable. Like I said, if the guys want to go race and they want to drop some camera in the car, you're able to do that without having to buy new suspension. Steering, this is probably the coolest one that I think we've we've put into a production UTV. We call this electro-hydraulic power steering. Has a 1.75 to 1 ratio. Has less than a degree of bump steer through 25 inches of wheel travel. And yes, it does have basically a trophy truck rack built into a, into a UTV that is a production part on the speed UTV. Comes with a 1.5 diameter piston. This is all a forging that gets final machined. These are steel here. We optimize the pivot point that allows us to run a rod in in this location. Uh, so there is rod ends. There is no ball joints anywhere on this car. Not on the steering, not on the suspension. Everything is in double shear in every location. Okay, so steering rack steering issues in general on a can-am there are some i think they've been fixed on the newer models and there are some upgrades you can do to this car right we've not done them uh, but i definitely uh with these tires right now actually it's been a little better yeah it felt but, good but, but with our bigger uh heavier or i don't know if they're heavier but our bigger tires we definitely there would be times when i'd have some steering issues you had to fight we, for it yeah we um, wanted to so electro hydraulic yeah so it looks like a pretty pretty cool piece of equipment to know. have on that car. I'm excited. I'm excited for the whole thing so far. This is the patented structure that we have on our trophy truck, but there's a lot of other cool features that we'll bring out in the future years into the UTV industry that we're already running and testing on the trophy truck. This time I'll come and I'll focus on the rear. Trailer arms, structurally sound through the spine, shock mount. Yes, not a piece of tubing with a couple tabs welded to it a full structure shock mount inside the speed UTV that ties this in, that bumps this out at 90 degrees when the shock comes up, 12.5 inches of travel in the shock shaft in the rear, 25 inches of actual wheel travel. So another example of, you know, an area where it's built tough. Mm -hmm. um, we have not, I've not heard of, we've not experienced, I've not seen anyone break their shock mounts on any of the cars that we run with or have driven or owned mm -mm. but still that's kind of cool and if you're gonna run it like you paid for it like you bought it <laughs> if you're gonna drive like you bought it drive it like you bought it like you paid for it yeah. um, or if you're different. gonna race it then maybe you know maybe that's an issue we don't beat on our car we run it in the sand but we drive it hard we do drive it hard we just we we like to back off when we feel like there might be like we don't yeah. do five jumps we yeah we're not two. racing yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> we did manage to destroy some parts on the inside of those shocks so you know, it gets beat around a little bit mash dash repeat thing so you're saying who designed these shocks and where, where did the design come from <laughs> all right who designed the shocks um i think you guys this is probably somebody in the in the off-road industry uh this shock design has been around for 20 years, okay? This is this is the shock design uh, with a few new features as I originally did in the, what was that? 1994 Riviera truck. Uh, this is uh, my internal bypass two shock um, on a production UTV. He does go more into depth on that in the full video. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure those shocks are going to work and I'm, I'm sure they're going to work well. And we know some people that might want to tweak with them, regardless of how well they work out. Be, but because you know what? There's always room for improvement in everything. And I, that's just the way life works. But to start off, what level he's saying he's starting off at, that just changes the game. Well, yeah. And, and here's the deal. So if you're going to race a car uh, on a dirt track, a side-by-side, -side, 
shock setup would be different than we would have for our car that we primarily do. Yeah. So that's to be considered. So someone we know. Maybe Nedward. Um, one thing I want to do is I want to keep the weight of the spare tire down low. Boom. 35 inch tall tire fits in the bed. So when doing this design, we had to step out a little further. And what does summer of 2021 look like? Give me a sneak peek. Most of the time, I'll get back to this. Most of the time in the summertime, guys take this vehicle, they push it aside, they pull out their boats, they pull out other vehicles because it's too hot to ride the UTVs in the summertime. Not anymore. There is what the design looks like as the speed UTV air conditioned heated vehicle. I need, I can't, I didn't even see this part. I have no choice but to buy a speed UTV. Uh, it sounded cool already to me, but now air conditioning, you know my problems, guys. I can't control my um, body temperature. My thermostat's all out of whack. So, love to do, no thermostat control. What's a gal to do? Thank you, speed, side by side, like. <laughs> yeah, heat and air conditioning, that's pretty crazy. Oh my God. Man, I feel like I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> Our own two cylinder, turbocharged UTV engine. So it is a speed UTV engine. It does have a massive, massive alternator. Um, you can go up to 230 amps as an option, um, but we have built in all capabilities in this build. So that this is not just, not just a toy, not just a race car, not just a family cruiser. It's, 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 an, it's an emergency vehicle. It's a safety vehicle. It can go all over the world that most vehicles can't get to. For some reason, I, I don't know where I got this. I don't know if I heard it or if I just thought it or I just preferred it. I don't know, but I felt like it was going to be a three-cylinder. You were wrong. I guess because we're biased to that guy right there. Because we got three-cylinder right there. Our I'm just trying, I feel like we're just trying to work our way up. You know, three, then maybe four, then maybe six. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So not happening. It's two-cylinder. Not that that's bad or anything wrong with that. I just, you know, turbocharged two cylinder uh cars make a lot of horsepower yeah just as much as a three cylinder no problem so alternator that's badass having yeah. an alternator um and we have we don't run so many accessories that we've had much of a battery issue or we did kill one battery but i think that was that just was, the life of the battery yeah but we do have you know we have a lot of stuff we have lights and radios and uh i don't know uh, on now we have a pump popper system oh, yeah. so you keep adding stuff like that and having an alternator to be nice especially if you have air conditioning and heating i i, I don't even know if you guys can see this but um i don't even care about anything else i could stop the video right now and buy one so engine uh 230 horsepower two cylinder turbocharged dual overhead cam 230 horsepower out of the box um and then there's some more coming up about that whole thing but I'm curious to see what the tuners do with this. I am curious too. Um, I mean, is it you know, is it like already cranked up? Is it already? Are they already? Is it like already tuned to get to that two thirty? Or yeah. is it I'm sorry. air conditioning? The largest in the industry that I'm aware of, fifteen plus gallons, with high flow fuel pumps. That if you run E eighty five, you don't have to change your fuel pump. It'll it'll adapt for you. The computer system will adapt for you so that you can just change your fuel on the fly. So here's the thing. A lot of people are running E85 in their car that's meant to run, uh, you know, 91. And I know uh, I know a lot of people are doing it without much issue, but I think over time you could have some issue. E E85 can be destructive to parts in cars that are not meant to run with E85. Right. But so this car apparently is dialed in for E85 and apparently is kind of like a flex feel, you know, like a flex feel vehicle. Obviously, if you well, if it's um, dialed for E85, then it seems like obviously you'd be able to go down, right? Well, so we have a flex fuel. The difference between this car, okay. So if you get that car tuned, you buy a tune, right? And you decide, hey, I'm going to bump up to the tune that runs E85. You have to put the E85 in it, which is not that big a deal. That's understandable. But you have to flash it. You have um, to flash the tune. Yeah. It sounds to me like he's saying the computer senses the 85 oh my switches God. over. Now that's the way, because that's the way a flex fuel vehicle, we own a flex fuel vehicle out there. We can drop E85 in it and um, it just does its thing.
Yeah. So that kind of sounds like that sounds like what he's saying. That is what, what he said. You're right. The computer will adjust. Okay. Okay. Um, this one here uh, does not have, and I want to make sure I say this, does not have an electric four-wheel drive in it. We have eliminated the electric four-wheel drive. And what I mean electric is push the button and it locks you into four-wheel drive. Push the button or hold the button down and click it up and it locks you into a spooled front end. This does not have that. It does have open diff, two-wheel drive, and four-wheel locked. What I mean locked is like a tractor. Basically locked front spool, locked rear spool, but they are done by dogs. So you can shift this thing on the fly. You can shift it in motion. You can be pretty aggressive on it because you don't have to worry about a small, tiny little shift fork shift in this thing or a small little motor that has a, a three millimeter screw holding it on. Uh, this thing is robust. It's very um, King of the Hammer style, Ultra 4. Grab your shift lever and put it in gear, which one you want, and go. Have fun. Go also. I am like loving it even more and more. I've been, I already told Morgan this. She said, we're making it happen. And now we're going to, because it has air conditioning. Morgan. <laughs> so yeah, we, so we own, again, we own the 17X3 Three. Three RS. Uh, and anyone that knows those cars or owns one, you know that when you put it in four wheel drive and you start to climb rocks or anything like that, it's really kind of three wheel drive mm -hmm. because that front diff, uh, it's not it's not designed for that. We don't use it for that, so it's not that big of a deal for us. But and and I know they fix that on the newer cars. They have the smart lock and you know whatever the different the different uh, whatever the diff is that they use now, and I know they work great. But I like the sounds of this one. It sounds pretty robust. Um, it sounds beefy. He said, okay, so far in this video, I've heard uh, Indy car, Formula One, trophy truck, air conditioning, heating. Um, what else did he just King say? Of the King of the Hammers. Oh my God, I can't wait to drive it. Uh, remember this? Um, are you guys looking for a race team for a beta test group? Which a is race team. <laughs> we, we believe in racing. We will be racing. No, we don't have to race, but we could just drive it for you to test real world. <laughs> real world. I think that's a good idea. Thank you. I don't know. I'm excited to see this thing. I, I definitely want to drive it. Uh, we might need to own one. I don't know how many. I feel are like you must have done. But... This is the only thing that makes sense. You must have done a little research after you agreed to let us be um, the real world <laughs> testers and realized that my heat issue. I appreciate it. All right. He's a I'm like, man. I am rooting for you. I was already, but dude, come on. Thank you. He probably saw the Glamis video where we had to put you in the freezer and he's like, oh, we better add air Robbie, conditioning to this God. Thing. Thoughtful. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so. Um, you guys, thank you so much to all of you that are subscribed. We appreciate it. Thank you for letting us um, continue to do this and coming along with us for the adventure. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It does help us out. So click the subscribe button. And while you're at it, click the little bell so you can get notified when our uh, videos drop because we have a lot of cool stuff coming up. We're staycationing right now in the state of California, but we'll be back to out riding soon with all of you. Just be patient and no panicking. We got this, guys. Um, so join us on our Facebook group, Dandy Off-Road Adventure Seekers. Link below where we can uh, share in your adventures and uh, talk to you more real time. We want to hook up and ride with all of you in the sand someday. That's why we're doing this. Um, also, if you're so inclined, join uh, our Patreon it's the Cool Kids Club. We have some members now, a few, a handful of fantastic, awesome people. Thank you guys, Tyler, Rodney, Rick. You guys are amazing. Um, and they get to see some behind the scenes footage, some bloopers, some stuff that doesn't get posted anywhere else, some early access to the videos. And we talk to them a lot on there. So thank you guys again for everything. And uh, can't wait to be back out there. I see all of you and cannot wait to be sitting in my new speed side by side. That's it.